nearly all human formed figures from 30,000 to 5,000 BCE were female, a reflection of the worship of women as nurturers, providers, and life givers. The large belly of the Venus figurines held all of creation. The large breasts nurtured and fed. The sagginess of her body signifies the suckling of the multitudes of life she has created. Everyone notices the importance of her body and we celebrate. Women were revered, women were venerated. Goddess worship prevailed. However, does anybody realize that in all of these figurines, the woman's got no face? In some cases, no head at all? Does no one consider that she has no mouth to voice her opinions, no eyes to appraise the world she brought into being? And this is purposeful, as it's easy to see that the sculptor had the talent to craft a face, even a simple one. Does this choice signify an early form of sexism woven into the fabric of our DNA from its very inception? Or is it a testament to the societal structures that have shaped our perceptions since time began? Because even when a figurine celebrates one part of a female, you know, her anatomy, it by default excludes other part of her, you know, her head, her face, her brain. This brings up an interesting question. If you believe in a creator, did that creator create women to have no voice? Let me tell you a story. I was at a picnic once with my husband and I brought him a plate of food, which I always do. Uh, you know, he provides me with more than I could imagine. It's the least I can do to bring him a plate of food. And this young couple next to us freaked out, as my mother did when she first found out that I did this. <laughs> anyway, we started talking about how the little things I do for my husband makes him feel like a king. And in response, he treats me like a queen. And so we asked that couple, don't you want that? You know, don't you want to feel like that? And she said, I will if he goes first. And he said, no, I'll go if she goes first. They were afraid to honor each other in case they were taken for granted or used or rejected. But how likely was that going to happen? Someone treats you like a king and you're going to reject them? No. Take them for granted, maybe. That's what you got to watch out for, but not rejection. You see, when you bring your divine feminine to the table, your man automatically drops into a sacred masculine. We don't really understand the dynamics of masculine and feminine anymore. Masculinity and femininity are complementary dynamics, which together produce innate harmonious balance. When a woman uses her innate femininity, it instinctively puts men into their roles as masculine beings.